Hi everyone, my name is Maria Varghese and I invite you to join me for the fourth lesson of the Bible Sketchbook Project. Today we are going to look at what the Bible has to say on the power of words. To understand the power of words, let's take the help of something else we use in our daily lives. Tools. A tool is defined as a device or implement used to carry out a particular function. Tools come in many shapes and sizes, from knives and spoons in our kitchens to pencils and rulers in our backpacks, we depend on many simple and professional tools daily. Each of these tools is designed for a specific purpose, and when used correctly, the result is rewarding. But when we misuse any tool, the outcome can be problematic. Let's take a crayon, for example, a simple tool that we use to add color to our drawings. We all know from a very young age what a crayon does. While crayons can bring joy to the person using it, it can cause a lot of physical and emotional distress when it makes a mark on the wall or on the couch instead of the paper for which it was designed. This is true of any tool. When used with care, tools help to improve our life. But when used carelessly, a tool can become harmful. Our words are one such tool, one that we learn to use at an early age to tell others what we are thinking, share our ideas or to spread information. Written or spoken, words have immense power. From world leaders to tennis coaches, everyone depends on this essential tool to communicate. From facts and fiction to praise and comfort, words have the power to make laws, show love make us laugh and teach us new things. And like all other tools, when used carelessly, words also have the power to be dangerous. From lies and gossip to hate and ridicule, the words we speak or write can destroy relationships, start wars and cause disharmony. The Bible says, when you talk, do not say harmful things, but say what people need. Words that will help others become stronger. Then what you say will do good to those who listen to you. While not all of us have the same vocabulary or speak the same language, we all have a choice. The choice on whether our words are going to serve as a tool or be wielded like a weapon. In fact, your words are a simple way for you to practice the act of loving your neighbor as yourself. Because if you don't like being lied to, criticized or made fun of, then quite possibly no one else likes it either. Likewise, if you can remember how you felt when you were encouraged or appreciated or treated with respect, then chances are that others remember such moments as well. Because the Bible is very clear. The words you have said will be used to judge you. Some of your words will prove you right, but some of your words will prove you guilty. So the next time you feel the need to lie, bend the truth or hurl insults at someone, we need to remember that there's only one person rejoicing in such moments and that's the devil for today's creative activity i want you to watch a movie you've seen before it can be a movie you've seen many times or one that you uh, have seen just once but as you watch it this time i want you to pay attention to the lines of the movie and take notes if you have to in particular, I want you to come up with two lines from the movie, at least two lines from the movie. One is going to be a line that helps someone and the other is going to be a line that hurts someone. And once you have those two lines, I want you to creatively present them in your sketchbook or paper. I'm going to show you one as an example so you have an idea. Like always, let's start by adding the date, the topic, and any verse from today's lesson. Then toward the middle of the page, go ahead and write the title of the movie that you will be using for your exercise. 
I've chosen The Lion King as my movie. Above the movie name, I want you to write down lines from the movie that you think helped someone. And below the movie name, I want you to write down lines or words from the movie that hurt or scared someone. You could also write or draw who said the respective lines in the movie. If you've seen The Lion King, then you know the impact each of these words had on Simba's life. Neither Scar nor Rafiki used any form of force to convince Simba of their intentions. They merely used their words. But one of them had a negative effect on Simba's life and the other had a positive one. Whichever movie you choose, I hope you're able to see the impact a few words can have on someone's life. Once we understand the impact of our words, we can start to be more careful on how we use it. Thank you.